Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. It is the Earthmaster here on this end, August 16th, 2024, about 1046 a.m. here local time in California, where we still got a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up. Uh, latest click quake here on the globe shows a 1.2 into the Southern California area. Now, we did see uh, a little bit of earthquake activity above the microquake level here uh, this morning so far. Uh, and last night, late last night, seeing a 3.1 down south here uh, in between the uh, Elsinore Fault and the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, following that, a couple hours later, we got some adjustment upstream here near the Grapevine. This is where that 5.2 struck near Bakersfield over a week ago now. Uh, and then following that, a 2.5 here near Riverside, the Loma Linda area. Uh, and when you mix all this stuff in together, and look at the bigger picture. We're still getting quite a bit of strain and stress out here, bouncing back and forth between various areas of Southern California. So things are still uh, a little on the uh, unnerving side, to say the least, because of the potential of some larger quake activity here. Uh, I definitely don't think we're done yet uh, in terms of earthquake activity. Just a little lull in the movement for now, but uh, as I just pointed out there there's been a couple earthquakes there above the 2.5 threshold this shows all of the magnitudes including some of the microquakes uh, with the latest one down here 1.3 near Borrego Springs and uh, still got a little swarming going on here where that uh, 2.5 struck this morning and also a little separate swarm here west of the Salton Sea Ridgecrest area Ridgecrest area still seeing a little bit of earthquake activity up north of the Garlock Fault shear zone and uh, around the Bakersfield area still seeing some aftershock sequence there uh, including that 2.5 2.5 from yesterday and uh, 2.9 there today along with a, a bunch of other smaller quakes in there so let's check out the total tally here I'm kind of curious to see what we got um, looking at 644 earthquakes since that 5.2 struck uh, it's been about 10 days now I believe right back on the 6th of August so 10 days and prior to that there was only a handful of very small quakes but literally all of these 660 something uh, quakes out here are uh, a decent aftershock sequence there following that 5.2 and we're still seeing it uh, this is the last 30 days of earthquake activity here across California may look like a lot but gotta remember we're on a plate boundary out here so microquake activity is fairly common it's these uh, 2.5 and above and the fours and the five magnitude earthquakes that we've been noticing on an increase out here across this area of the state so we'll continue to watch that area for some further movement northern california is still awfully quiet not a whole lot going on up here it seems like uh, the adjustment is confined or at least the pressurization here is confined to the southern area of the state uh, this over here around the clear lake volcanic field is just a bunch of hydrothermal plants out here that uh, utilize the heated areas below um, to produce energy. There's a number of these uh, facilities out there uh, listed up there on the map. All right, uh, further out and about here, northern, uh, northwest here, Pacific Northwest, fairly quiet. A handful of smaller quakes up there, but really nothing big. Yellowstone National Park. Uh, a couple smaller quakes there from yesterday, but uh, let's give a double check here from the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. That gives us an overview of what's going on. And, uh, man, goodness, there's not a whole lot going on here. We'd, we'd be able to see it. There's a little spike of an earthquake here. A couple spikes there from last night. Those are going to be some very small earthquakes. Uh, and as noted here, Looks like the largest was a 1.7 yesterday, the latest a 1.2. So very small earthquakes around this area of the uh, Yellowstone National Park area. Oil fields still getting hit out in Texas and Oklahoma, north of uh, uh, the Oklahoma area outside of Edmond. Uh, this area has seen some earthquake activity here recently, a, a number of them. And I think they even seen some larger quake activity here a month or so back, if I remember, up in the... Uh, I believe it was the upper four range. And uh, there's a lot of oil fields out here. But I think they've uh, built a bunch of uh, housing developments on the, the former oil fields. They're getting, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, population density up here now. A lot of new homes 
being uh, developed on these oil fields, former oil fields. And uh, we'll continue to see earthquake activity, though, um, in those regions for the foreseeable future. One earthquake right smack dab on the New Madrid Seismic Zone. That's going to be a 2.3 about 1 o'clock this morning here. All right, worldwide activity. See what we got far as largest magnitudes here. Of course, yesterday is going to be that 6.1 in Taiwan. Um, so far today, it looks like it's going to be a 4.8 in Syria. Getting a, a sequence of earthquakes out here lately. Um, within the past couple days, they've seen a, a five-pointer and a 4.5 and now a 4.8. Let's see, this area of Syria sits just off the plate boundary here. I'm kind of curious to see uh, what their quake activity looks like in terms of larger scale potential. So stand by for a second while I pull up the search map. And we're just going to check out this area of Syria uh, to see uh, how big earthquakes have been out here. Just been a a little while since we've seen any major activity, but I know they can get that. They can get some big earthquakes out here. Let's see. So this search this specific area where we're seeing that uptick today, which uh, is around this area. Uh, earthquakes loading. Of course, I did 4.5 and above for the uh, models. It uh, looks like it's, there we go, about 44 of them. Not that big of a deal. Uh, this earthquake activity is actually happening in a region that hasn't seen any uh, historical earthquake activity. It's a little odd. Doesn't mean there hasn't been any um, happening, but not doc. There's none documented for this specific area in terms of earthquake activity above 4.5. A bunch across this area of the plate boundary and down south, uh, but not so much specifically in this area. Where, uh, wow, that's kind of crazy. I'm guessing that's some type of farmland out there. Interesting looking features there on the map, though. Goodness. They're long, skinny uh, looking fields. All right. So, yeah, obviously uh, earthquake activity uh, more prevalent to the northwest and to the south. Largest magnitudes here. Um, looks like a 6.4 back in 1918, 6.3, uh, Turkey area, but again, this is all much closer to the plate boundary. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Definitely seen a, you know, a noticeable uptick here in the, in a, uh, unusual area that really hasn't seen a lot of, uh, historical data there for earthquakes. Uh, across the Java Trench area, see what we got here for the globe. Um, looks like that swarming that we've seen here yesterday is starting to die off. Notice the red color rings indicating older earthquake activity. Newer movement today looks like it's switching back up north here towards the Japan area. Uh, and of course, you know, a lot of folks watching this area here, the subduction zone region, this trench for some mega quake potential. This is the area that the Japanese, uh, uh, folks there put out a uh, mega earthquake warning there. So uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. There's a little quake, 4.4, six, uh, 6 miles deep here, just on the uh, western side here of Japan. Uh, let's see, aside from that, yeah, just, uh, my goodness, what have we got down here? 4.5. See what's happening out here. Around the Caribbean area, looks like Jamaica, 4.5 early this morning, about 6 o'clock or so. So a little bit of adjustment going on here across the northern edge of the Caribbean plate. Big Island of Hawaii, see what's going on. This, <laughs> I think it's time for a new mouse. I got that little, the little wheel right in the center that you can uh, zoom in and zoom out easily. Well, this wants to get stuck. I might just have something in it. So, all right, anyway, uh, earthquake activity out here, mainly, uh, goodness, not a whole lot going on. A lot of this here from yesterday, a couple smaller quakes out here from today. Let's 
just do a quick glance here at the um, Kilauea instruments, see if there's anything uh, major going on here that we need to know about. Seismograph stations here, fairly calm, aside from a couple smaller quakes listed in the last 12 hours there on the map, on the graph there. Um, deformation data shows that we've been, uh, well, pretty much leveled off here, stationary since uh, last night. So not a whole lot of change going on there across Kilauea Volcano for now. Uh, let's run up to Iceland here real quick and see. I wish I could run up to Iceland, get an escape from this heat here in California. That would be nice. I'm not a not a big fan of the heat anymore. Uh, got the cat level volcano down here showing some elevated activity today, 2.9, 2.2, and a couple other smaller quakes out here uh, near that volcano. Uh, the Savart Singi area near Grindavik and uh, the, the Blue Lagoon area. Uh, Really nothing major going on. A couple smaller earthquakes north and south here, but no elevated events going on there in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, let's check out the latest information here. This is put out today. It looks like they did put out a new update. Uh, magma intrusions and even eruptions in the craters area can start at any time. And of course, we've known this, and I've been mentioning this for a little bit as well. Uh, we're looking at uh, a decent amount of magma underneath this area. And uh, we've accumulated, I believe, uh, over 20 million cubic meters of magma underneath the Savart Singhi. And uh, things could, uh, you know, happen at any minute now. Here's the vertical displacement. Here's the last eruption, right? Uh, back in the end of May, lost a bunch of volume of magma now we're going back up and we're we're way above the previous level seen here so you know we're, we're talking about any any minute any time now that we could see this thing really start to kick up but there's going to be a major increase in earthquake activity before any eruption we've seen it in the in the past uh, and it's normally just a short period of time uh, roughly about half an hour or so before uh, the major earthquake activity uh, at least in intensity as uh, far as swarming goes, and then the eruption there at the surface or magma displacement. Uh, one earthquake way up north here, 4.4, that's from yesterday. Let's check out space weather, see what we have across the sun today. Fairly quiet as um, far as solar flaring goes. If you look at the graph here, just been crackling a little bit with some sea flares, maybe an occasional low-grade M flare or two. But uh, really nothing major going on here. Uh, we do have the sunspot 3784, which is, uh, um, you know, still looking at us a little bit in terms of the um, Earth-Sun view. But uh, over the next couple days, this will be rotating further out across the western limb and will be out of sight, out of mind. So uh, that's about our only chance here of seeing any uh, flaring activity from sunspots. Uh, we do have some former old sunspots coming back around the bend again. These are not new sunspots, but they're former sunspots that may have come around and back around a couple times now. It's hard to keep track of all these sunspots, but they're not new ones. They're just, they're, they're going to be renamed. I don't know why they rename them, but every time, let's say, for example, this sunspot goes off on the western limb, travels the far side of the sun, comes back here in a couple weeks and looks the same and it is the same it just it gets renamed to a different sunspot number so it's not like a new sunspot popping up it's the same sunspot that's gone around you know no telling how many times but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this area down here looks a little complex we'll get a better view of that here in the coming days Severe weather risk out here today, mainly across the Southern Plains area. Looks like Kansas and Oklahoma, portions of Arkansas as well. Got uh, really no chance of tornado activity, at least less than 2%. And uh, main threat's gonna be the typical wind and some large hail out here around Oklahoma and Kansas. So just a heads up there, stay weather aware if you're out in those regions today, so. All right, it is Friday, folks, so stay safe. Have a good day. A little spike of an earthquake on Petrolia. That's in Northern California. Not a big one. That's a, a very small quake, but localized to the seismograph station. The rest of the seismos look pretty quiet. 
We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the Friday night update. Enjoy your Friday, folks. Stay safe out there and be prepared.